Okay, go ahead. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by Zoom or by telephone or via www.amherstma.gov. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by technological means. I call this meeting to order. All righty. And um, the town is recording this meeting. So if anyone else is recording at this time, please notify me now. Do we have any people in the gallery? We do not. Okay. So hearing none, um, we're just going to do a quick roll call. Um, so I see, obviously, I'm here. Uh, Richard? Here. Lee? Here. And Ken? Here. All right. Excellent. Um, so there is nobody that I can see attending at the moment. So we will skip by um, public comment. And I will share my screen. What about minutes? Oh, yes. Sorry. Did I come down? Oh, nope, no. I'm just moving yeah. too fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I have? Yes, I have them. Let me share my screen so you can have them up there. Where are they? Okay. All right. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. I mean, if, if I make them smaller, is that too small? No. no. It's okay. Okay. Gentlemen, have you had a chance to review these? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. I move okay. to approve the minutes of October 13th, 2022. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Excellent. Then moving along. You will see our first of a few excise abatements. This is for week um, October 10th through the 12th. There are five abatements for calendar year 2022 in the amount of $148.02. All right. I move to approve that. That's how many did, say that again. There are five abatements for the calendar year of 2022 in the week of uh, October, well, in the two days of October 11th and 12th, in the amount of $148.02. Okay. I didn't hear the 48, okay. Oh, okay. All right, so I move to approve that set of abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Next here, you will see um, October 19th through the 31st. There are 12 abatements, all for 2022, in the amount of $857.75. Do you remember what the code OS means? OS. Yeah, just curious. I can, if you can bear with me for a moment, I can tell you, I think. Um, out of state? I don't yes, know. out of state. Oh. That's exactly what it is. Meaning that the, the individual moved out of state. Yes. Okay. These All codes right. are still fairly new to me because I don't often do the abatements. It's usually Teresa and Stephen. So I apologize for not knowing that off the top of my head. Right. I'm oh, you're, you're, you're going to give us a standard operating book though, right? Kim, with all this stuff. I would like to actually oh, um, give you something, you know, um, a calendar, um, so on and so forth. Actually, um, a calendar is something that's going to be on the agenda for next week. We have prepared um, a, a, a sort of what's going on in what month's calendar. So we can talk more about that later, but. Okay. I mean, it'd be helpful. Things we use a lot like these codes and then the exemptions. Mm -hmm. Just have a one pager that we could look at ourselves. Yes. Okay. Did we, um, I'm sorry, yeah, did we get yeah, yeah. this? Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> I move to approve the, this set of abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And that was it for abatements. Was that an unusually small number of abatements for one? It moment? was. Mm -hmm. This time of year, generally, um, there's not a whole lot of excise happening because uh, it's the end of the calendar year. People have gotten their bills already. Many people have already done the abatements. Um, these are probably like end of the year. I see that the dates on these are all um, October. So 
chances are these plates were canceled um, with the exception of maybe this one here, um, this one here, and this one here. My thought is many of these were probably canceled towards the end of the, of the year. So they're not going to get a whole lot of money back um, anyway. So, and those could be the same case. Um, those larger ones could be the same case. They're just, you know, a larger excise tax bill. Um, but I would say in the next meeting, there probably won't be very many again, because if you cancel your plates in December, you don't get a refund anyway, uh, because excise is by the month rather than the day. Um, so it's normal to see this little of amount during this time of the year. So, okay, um, moving on is a um, lean for chapter 61A. Um, this is on three parcels on map 26A, lots 42, 43, and 144. Um, the property addresses are 416 Bay Road, 495 Middle Street, and then just a lot of land on Middle Street. All of these parcels are abutting each other and used to be known as Small Ones Farm. Um, so the new owner is Plumbrook Farm LLC. So basically all we're doing here is just transferring the lien to the new ownership. Um, also, I have for you their application, which just explains exactly what they're going to be doing on this parcel, which I think is pretty in line with what's been happening. Um, so I as you can, when I looked at the property card on this, I was confused because the it didn't appear the last owners had, did go into chapter because they had they had large assessments on the property. They um, so one of the pieces of land this as you see here this one um, is sixty one acres of land so that could be why you're seeing a pretty significant assessment. Um, there's also on four sixteen Bay Road there is a house involved with that with that um, assessment. So only you can see here, it's a total of one acres and they're only gonna be farming uh, 0.65 of that. Um, so the rest will be for their driveway, their yard and their house. Um, I think in the past, this middle street parcel was included in the 416 Bay Road. This is a new, a new parcel. Um, so I think that's that's part of possibly what you're seeing there as well. Is this, I mean, are these new owners or is this just a name change? These are new owners. Okay. There's a farm stand there too, right? Yes. So when you when something like this comes through, I assume you <clears throat> update the property card completely. Yeah. So um okay. It takes a little bit of time to get them updated because they're applying a fiscal year ahead. So this is for fiscal year 2024. Okay. Um, this particular property split has already happened for the fiscal year 23. And I just came across it the other day. I think the map was not updated, but that yeah. has since been changed. Okay. Um, but the, you know, I'll go, I'll be going back in 24 to actually update these particular um, acreage counts for what they're doing. And by that, I mean, for example, I'll just pick on this one because it's easy. The Christmas trees, it looks like they're doing one acre of Christmas trees. So on the landline, on the record card, you will see one acre and the code for Christmas trees. Um, I guess I just, for another example, again, on the orchards, um, vineyards, blueberry and cropland, it looks like they're doing apples, pears, peaches, blueberries. Um, I think that's what that says. And grapes. Um, not quite sure what that says. Um, so, um, berries. Oh, is that a berry? So it could be could be strawberries, could be blueberries, could be a number of things. Um, so I'll be updating that particular landline, the five point five one five acres, to match orchards. Um, so all or, this all this land that's exempt now goes into chapter. You just get a evaluation from the state then and we go with that right yep so it's not exempt it's just at a discounted rate because it's being farmed um but the state basically what they do is they give us figures to update our our cost tables for these particular um types of of um use codes land use codes and so we do that every year so that sometimes the um the value of it may decrease if they're like, if for some reason we have 
a lot of issue growing hay here for some, you know, something is causing the hay to be a problem. The state may recognize that on, you know, whatever side of the Connecticut River you're on that and that's happening, um, your values may go down, whereas on the other side, they're having no problems and their value is going to go up. Um, so, you know, they have a formula that they figure out how to increase or decrease the values of each land use code, depending on what's happening um, with the farmers each year. But what I recall is that what the state gives you is a nominal figure for assessment. Yeah, so they'll say like, um, it goes you know, from Chris, like a hundred thousand to five thousand. Yes, I mean, it's a huge yeah. drop. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So when you're farming your land, you get a pretty significant discount on your on your land. Um, okay. So just moving moving on to the um, backside of the application, it looks like the farmer is the owner, so they have signed this. Um, saying that they're going to do so. This is the rights and acknowledgement. So this just explains um, what they have to do to continue to stay in chapter. It talks about the application process. It talks about the lien and how the taxes work. Um, if they were to remove a portion of the land from chapter for any reason, there's the, the penalty tax um, depending on what they're doing with it. If they're, if they're keeping it in their family and they're looking to build a home for you know, a child, a, a, a parent, a, you know, so on and so forth themselves, um, then they would not be assessed to that rollback tax. It talks about the appeal process. And so this person has just signed um, saying that they agree with that. Um, so when, when this sale happened this year, did the town, what's the process of the town looking at to buy the property? So um, in a perfect world, the, 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 the current owner would yeah. uh, notify the town and let them know that their intentions are to sell the property. Um, in this case, I think they would have said, you know, we we intend to sell the property to someone who is going to continue farming. Okay. Um, in in the case of I, you know, I don't know. I'm just looking to sell the property. They would let us know, and then that would start the 120 day um, time frame for the town to decide whether or not this is something that they are interested in purchasing. If they are interested in purchasing it, um, an appraisal would be done and uh, the town would be able to use the market value um, to, to purchase the property at. So, so whatever is, they- Is the assessor's office the one they contact? Yes. Okay. Uh, sometimes they may send it to the town manager's office, but okay. um, you know, it, it eventually would, would get to me. And there's multiple departments that would be involved in deciding whether or not uh, this particular parcel that would be- something that the town would want. Um, we would go through the town manager's office, the planning department, the building department, the DPW, um, conservation, so on and so forth. Because, you know, if there's, for example, um, if this was the majority of it was wetlands and then there was also a sewer, like a very complicated sewer line that ran through the middle of the parcel, the town might be interested in that because they want to preserve the wetlands as well as be able to maintain and access very easily the sewer line. That's a total extreme, um, but just an example of why the town might want a piece of property. Um, sometimes if there's like, you know, if, if, if there's a parcel abutting, for example, the, um, the water, the town water of the Atkins Reservoir, um, you know, the, the town may say, okay, we're, we're interested in this parcel just to preserve the space around the reservoir. Um, you know, there, there could be many reasons why the town might be interested. So I'm just so, trying to clarify. So they contact the assessor's office or they send it to the town manager and he sends mm -hmm. it on to the assessor's office. Yeah. Then does the assessor office send back letters saying the town is not interested in exercising their- Yeah, office? so I haven't, um, I haven't actually had to do that here Yet this parcel, um, I, I don't recall if this was, if we were notified with this. I think this was a, a long time process. Um, so I, it could have happened before I got here. I'm not quite sure. Um, but anyway, what I understand happens is everybody that would need to be notified in the town departments would be notified. We'd have that 120 days. If we decide beforehand, we can obviously you know, let them know beforehand. If we don't decide by the 120 days, we either need to notify them and say, you know, we need a couple of extra days because X, Y, and Z, 
um, could you grant that extension, which they have the right to say no, and then we lose our rights to, to purchase. But what I understand happens is there's a letter that comes from the town manager's office that I then get a, a copy of and mail out to the owner saying that the town does not want to exercise their first right of refusal at the time. So did the prior notice occur with this transaction? Um, I, I'm not aware. I don't know. And generally, I think uh, when a parcel is, when we get notification and they're saying we are selling this to another farmer who's going to continue farming, the town immediately steps away because they want to keep the land um, farming anyway. But again, you know, this is the first time that, I shouldn't say this is the first one, but this is one of, of a few that I have come into the middle of. So I don't know how the beginning of the, the project so works. This, so this started before you took took off. I believe it did. I think there's been a lot of conversation with this parcel um, for okay. since I started. So I think this was something that happened before I, I stepped on. You know, again, with, with future parcels, um, you know, like I said, I would immediately notify the departments that need to be involved. Um, I often... If I hear about it in the middle of the sale, if something has already occurred, I, I generally ask for a letter from the previous, you know, from the person who's selling it as well as the person who is purchasing it, saying they intend to continue farming. Even if, you know, we've lost our rights because they've already gone too far in the process, I still want that letter because well, that's, it, that's where I'm concerned we lost our rights because we failed to. So it's not always the town. We, I mean, we don't always know when a parcel is going to be sold. Sometimes it's put out on the, the open air market, which we can then potentially see it. But we also, if, if it's a private sale, you know, if it's a farmer to a farmer, a neighbor to a neighbor, it's something we may not always know about. So unfortunately, it's an often occurring situation in so the, across the state i think and, and it could be even farther than that where so the people just the, don't so the compliance doesn't kick in until somebody hires a lawyer right and even then i think someone you know some of the attorneys don't either think, don't know to notify us or don't notify i us. would think this would cloud the title though you know actually i'm thinking now that we're talking yes. about this and the attorneys, I believe there was an attorney from Boston involved with this. And I did get, I think it was to the point where it was too far in the process of the first right of refusal, but the intention was to continue farming. And I think I did get a and that's letter. That's fine. I'm more concerned when they're selling it to a developer to do something else. Exactly. And, and we let the ball fall because we didn't know about it. Right. And it's one of those sort of gray hard spots that, you know, if we don't know about it, we can't do anything about it. Um, I mean, we could hold up. We could hold up a transaction, I suppose. Um, yeah, I would if it was going to a developer for commercial. I would. Yeah. Hold up. The burden yeah. of notice, the burden of notice, I believe, either falls on the buyer or the seller. It's really supposed to be the, the seller. Yeah. Uh, because they're supposed to notify us before they put it on the open air market. Which I mean, a, a oftentimes to, people don't know that too. So, is there any penalty if they, you know, um, didn't notify? So the only thing is the rollback tax. So the 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 sellers would have the five year rollback tax on the parcel, but otherwise, no. So I guess just it'd be curious at year end to just run a list of all the sales of chapter properties. And just confirm that you've been notified, or if you haven't been notified, then what's what can we do to improve it? So uh, something that I did in Greenfield was I was a big stickler on this because I mean it's right in your rights and acknowledgments. It's you know the the whole process is explained should be explained to you when you enroll in chapter. Um, I personally like to give a lot of information to anyone who is enrolling for the first time. Yeah. Um, it's in the contract you just showed us, isn't it? It yeah, is. He, he signed um, it. Oh. It is. And so um, so I really was a stickler on this. And, and things started to actually happen more often with attorneys in Greenfield. And I would hear people say, boy, you're, you're a stickler on this. It's, I had no idea oh. that this was happening. So it's sort of educating the attorneys in the area as well that they must do this in order to have a smooth process because we could hold up a, a sale. 
Yeah, I mean, you um, have a lien that you have to release. That's, that's right, too. Um, and so along with it. along that's with the, the process, the previous owner should be paying to release that lien yeah. so that the new owner can pay to yeah. um, record a new lien. Well, this so is, this is this is recorded at the Registry of Deeds. It shows up in a title search. Exactly. Yeah. So um, okay. what what could happen is we do not release the tax lien because the town is not responsible to pay to release the lien. Um, and so when, for example, with a developer buying a, a piece of property that was being farmed and they need the, re the lien to be released, the only way we would do it is if they pay for it. Yeah, and, um, the, and they give us the option to buy it if we want to buy it. I don't know if we can go that far at that point. Uh, but I, I'd want to get the city attorney if something came up like that. Yeah. Uh, and again, I think, you know, that would probably happen because I think there's, yeah. you know, probably frustration with that happening too. So, but there is, it's a tough, it's a tough spot for us to be in when, when we don't get notified. But I think, you know, my intention when stuff like this happens is to make sure that the attorneys know that they need yeah. to do this. Cause oftentimes parcels that are in chapter don't sell a lot because they stay in the family or they, you know, it, something like that happens. And so, you know, attorney, newer attorneys may not know about it. It's easily forgotten because it's not something that occurs on every sale. So, you know, there's a lot of places where it can fall to, yeah, a, dead, the reason you know, to a dead spot. Yeah, the reason I'm sensitive on this, Kim, is the fact that uh, the 150 acres right across from where I live was yes. in chapter and uh, came out chapter to put 700 student housing units. Yes. And they did notify that. I mean, it was such a big thing. The town was notified they could buy it if they wanted to, but it yeah. the was out of sight. All right. I just want to remind you, this is a public meeting. Yep. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, so and, I, and, and uh, in the, in the yeah. case, in the case like this, where it's going from farming to farming though, you said the 10, the, the tendency of the town is to, stay out of the transaction yes. yeah yes mm -hmm. i mean occasionally if you know with an extreme situation um i don't even think this occurred here at all but just an extreme situation would be this parcel happens to house like a watershed you know and, and the town has the the an easement on it then the town might be interested in at least purchasing that portion of the of the land which uh -huh. could be done as well but that's like a totally extreme situation where it's going from farming to farming and the town is interested um but yes the town generally speaking i think um from what i have gone through in greenfield as well as heard from other communities the town generally won't be interested if it's farming to farming Okay, so, but, but this is a, but we're talking about something right now that is actually not in front of us here. This is a transfer of the lien from one owner to the next, right? Yep, so the property has sold. So the, um, the it was two, it was uh, 416 Bay Road and 495 Middle Street. That's right on the corner. Yep, um, and so what they did was they split the lot, um, the 416 Bay Road was split because they, what they would like to do is to keep the house that's on the lot currently. Um, and then they'd like to build their own home and the house that's there. It, it, from what I understand, they'd like to use it for the farm help. Um, so eventually they may want to take out some, uh, maybe more, maybe the whole thing, maybe nothing more of um, for uh, Middle Street lot the last one here listed the map 26a lot 144 right. but so it's also be, very up in the air right now as to what they're going to do they may just continue to use the house so they may be there. taking they may be taking part of the property out of chapter lands and putting another part of it uh, into it right in other words, the, um, house, the current house may go into chapter lands right because it's being used for farming purposes right nope the house would not be able to be included um, a residence no matter how it's used cannot be included in, oh, okay. in chapter. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if so, they take anything out, it would be that uh, one, that 0.93 acres. Um, and even at that, 
they could still potentially be farming a portion of it because it's contiguous to the 61 acres as well as the 1.13. So, uh, one, one, three. So, so I guess I just want to be clear about this since we've belabored this already. The town's opportunity to buy, did that arise even though this is essentially a transfer of chapter land as opposed to taking it out of chapter It's not land? a transfer. It's not a transfer. It's a whole new transaction, my understanding. It, it yeah, you're both right. Um, so, so, a, so oftentimes a sale is um, referred to as a transfer. Um, so yes, this, those parcels were sold from small ones farm to plum book farm farm, uh, the town, I think there was a little confusion with the first right of refusal, but hearing that the, the parcel was going from farm, from being farmed by small ones to being farmed by plum brook, the town wasn't interested anyway. Okay. Um, we did get, now that we've talked about it more and more and more, I I'm, I'm recalling, we did get a letter from, I believe it was Plumbrook Farm stating their intentions were to continue farming. Clarify one thing, we're releasing the current lien that the old owner had and putting on a new lien, correct? This one is just the um, new lien for the new owner. So okay. with, with the release of liens, um, some towns do them, some towns don't. It seems like Amherst has some, some have been done, some have not been done. Um, we're actually talking about a process of how we can do this very cleanly because the town ends up having to pay for liens being released if we don't do it in a timely manner because we then can't find the previous owner. Um, so more to come on that process, but currently this is just to, um, to, to, record a new lien for the new owner in their name. Okay. So I move we approve this. Second. All Second. those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, wonderful. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. So um, next on our agenda is just, um, oh, in regards to that, we need uh, each of you to come in and sign that lien um, so we can send that off to the Registry of Deeds. Uh, one of us does not suffice anymore, is that, or the chair does not suffice? Um, for certain things, yes. So when doing the chapter, um, um, what are they called? The renewal of 61 plan. Yes, then it would just be the chair. In the case of this particular lien, uh, all of your names were on it as members of the board. So we would need all of you to sign. Um, so next on our agenda is the assessor update. Uh, I, I don't have a whole lot to tell you, but I can say, um, as you probably have seen, I think classification went pretty well. Um, we have set a single, they have voted to set a single tax rate, no residential exemption, no small commercial exemption and no open space exemption. Um, so I think that that went well. I think I, I saw Lee on my TV screen. So Leah, thank you for pro providing your gravitas <laughs> along with Kim's to this whole proceeding. Thank yeah, you very much. Kim thank did you. a good oh, job. He, he, I was even, boarding he, in Europe at the time. Yeah. So how was Europe? Europe is um, unmasked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So um, I think there will be some more potential conversations about the residential exemption, but at the moment um, they're voting to not do it this fiscal year, which I think is, is or they voted to do it, not, not this fiscal year. Um, but I think that's a good vote because we wouldn't have time to be able to get this in place before the tax bill. So we would have to um, delay that and ask for a preliminary third quarter um, and then hope that we can get everything done in place for our fourth quarter. And if we can't, then, you know, that's a whole very difficult issue. So I'm pleased to say that they did vote to not do it for this fiscal year. However, there's a possibility that there could be more conversation on that for future years. I'm going to assume that you're okay with the interjections from the finance director. Um, Absolutely. Yep. Uh, in the middle of the meetings, I, I was a little, I was a little, unsure as to it had yep. a sort of a mansplaining 
feel to it. I, I actually asked him to jump in if there was something that I was right, uh, missing, okay. especially with the residential exemption, because the study was done before I was here, um, right. before I was a, a member of, of the town. So I, you know, I said, if, if there's anything that you feel needs to be um, spoken to, please, you know, okay. interrupt and, and do that. Um, so it along sounds the- like, It sounds like the residential exemption is for, uh, for the length of the time that all three of us are serving and you are employed, it's gonna be like a little mosquito that's <laughs> sort of in our ears all the time that we have to, sort of, <laughs> that we have to address. Is that, is that sort of how this goes? I, possibly, you know, it all depends. I, I, I don't know what's to come in the future, but if they decide that they want to vote it in for next year, um, a, a conversation needs to be had at a much earlier date than now. So, I, I just get I, the sense that we wouldn't we wouldn't even have this to address if there wasn't something called Cape Cod. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that the training session helped. Um, yeah, uh, to 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 uh, inform folks so that they had most of their questions answered before the yeah. commitment session. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and. and Generally, Maybe that's, that's something that you do every year. You know. I was just going to say, generally, that's not something that we do. Um, yeah. But you know, happy to to do that if that's helpful to people. So, so can I just observe that I get a sense that there is still a lingering um, confusion on the council about commercial versus residential. That, it's a difficult. Um, there, are um, on, there are people on the council who think that. Um, that large apartment complexes are somehow commercial and they're not, they're residential, so. They're, yeah, and it's, I can totally understand the thought process on that because you, you know, you see this large residential complex, which someone is using as their livelihood, you know, that's someone's business. Um, and so why can't it be addressed that way? But at the same time, um, you know, it, it is a residence and the state classifies a residence as a residence, regardless of if it's a large apartment building or a single family home. In other words, um, there's something called state law and we yeah. can't do anything about that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but I understand, you know, I totally understand that, that frustration and the thought process because it would make sense to me both ways, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so along the lines of classification, um, I do want to let you know that we should be able to run a, our very first test file, hopefully today, that's the plan, but if it doesn't happen today, um, probably the week after Thanksgiving, I, I feel like we're in really good shape to get our tax bills situated and out either, you know, early or at least on time. What is a test file? So what we'll do is we will we'll use the test program in our billing system. So we have, we have what's called test, train, and live. Um, and so we use either test or train and we go and we take our actual tax file and put it into the billing system and do the whole process, make sure it works um, all the way down to the, the last step. We don't print them because um, we don't want to waste all that paper, but we get everything in there, make sure everything is working properly and that there's no hiccups anywhere. We do that usually a couple of times. And then once we are comfortable with saying, okay, we're ready to go into the live program. But what then are you looking go. for? What are you looking for? So what we, what happens uh, occasionally is there's a, there's a break in a bridge somewhere inside of this, the billing system and something doesn't work properly. So um, for example, something that has happened to me in the past was um, um, exemptions were not being applied to the tax bill. Uh, so we had to try to figure out what was going on, why that wasn't working. Um, something else that has happened in the past to me was the LA-4 that we print out of vision, which is telling us how many parcels we have and the total value of single families, the total value of two families, so, so on and so forth, doesn't match from vision to munis. Yeah. And in that case, something is not being read correctly somewhere mm -hmm. along the lines mm -hmm. and could be that somebody isn't getting a tax bill, period, mm -hmm. or somebody's getting way overtaxed, mm -hmm. or, you know, it could be a number yeah. of things. So yeah. we just want to make sure that that's all smooth, that the, mm -hmm. the LA-4s match, that mm -hmm. personal property is working, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that people's bills aren't spitting out with funky digits, uh, you know, who knows, numeric number, you know, I mean, we, who knows, there could be a number of things, but just looking to make sure that the whole process matches where it needs to match 
there's no funky um so there is a matching. error yeah oh yeah. yes okay do yeah. you um uh, do you have a ballpark idea of how many tax bills are so uh get exemptions i i teresa might know that uh, you're talking okay. the personal exemptions i'm sorry are you talking the personal exemptions yes yeah okay. off the top of my head i don't um i know that it it to me, it feels a lot less than other communities, especially with the veterans. Um, but that just could be that a people who are getting these who who could be eligible for these properties don't own a par property they they rent and or um, maybe we just don't have as many veterans, for example, as uh, a community like Greenfield. Um, we do have quite a bit of senior exemptions. Um, those feel like they might be more in line with other communities that I have been aware of. Um, but that really varies per community because so, it really depends on who you have in your community. So are you feeling satisfied right now that we've disseminated, or the town has disseminated mm -hmm. information effectively enough about the exemptions? I do. I think, you know, I always would say there's always room for improvement on that because there's somebody out there somewhere that had no idea. Um, I do feel like there could be better outreach with, to the veterans, um, but but I also, you know, it could be just lack of knowledge on my part of how many veterans we actually have here in Amherst that own property and are eligible to be able to um, get this exemption. Because you could be a veteran, own property, but not eligible because you don't have at least a 10% um, disability that's due to your service. Um, so, you know, it, it could be a number of things that that are happening and, and it could be just my lack of knowledge for only being here for a year and not knowing that yet. Um, but have I do talk, feel like we've done a pretty have good Have we talked to the uh, Veterans Association here in town? We have. So um, so one of the things actually I wanted to, to mention to you guys is that on the 8th of December, which I had talked about before, I'm going to be at the Senior Center at 11 o'clock doing a presentation on our exemptions. Wow. Um, so so you know, I will be presenting these the veterans exemptions as well and what people can get if that's something that, you know, they would qualify for. So hopefully that word spreads. Um, I'm actually hopeful to work a little closer with the veterans office and see if there's other things that we can do. You know, maybe there's other events that I can attend that would um, give me the opportunity to, to present this information again to them. Um, but I think, you might be able to send an email to the veterans group and just say you're having this December 8th and any veterans interested, you come over to the senior center. Yes. Yep. Um, and, and oftentimes, you know, a veteran may be a senior as well and may be getting a senior exemption instead um, yep. because, you know, they didn't know about the veterans exemption. It could be at the same amount of money. Um, it could be more in some cases for the for the senior exemption versus the veterans exemption. So, um, so you so you are in contact with the veterans representative. Yes. Yep. And I hope to be um, more in contact with their office um, about the the tax work off as well. Um, I think that we could certainly get that out there much more than we do now. Um, so it's something that that I've been working with the senior center on as well as hopefully soon. Um, more so with the veterans office. So that's a result of your outreach to the senior center. Uh, it, it's a result of that as well as um, myself, payroll, um, HR, and the senior center all having new people. <laughs> so okay. everybody right. kind of just wanted to, you know, touch base meet, figure out what's going on, how we do this, what's the That's normal great. process, what's the new, you know, are there, is there a, dif a different way to do it? So we've been uh, actually meeting quite often um, right. about that. Generally, I think, um, especially with the work off program, um, all of those people that I just mentioned, plus or minus a few, um, meet anyway to figure out you know, the, the, the income guidelines for the senior work off, we figure out how many slots we have available, so on and so forth, and just get on the same page with that. Um, and I really like to do a presentation each year um, at the senior center and or anywhere else to talk about our personal exemptions, just to get that out there to people if they need that help that that option is there. So I'm happy to do that more often. Bravo. Could you, That's could great. you share could you share with us the presentation when you have it put together? Um, so basically all I'm gonna do, be doing is I'm gonna be bringing a copy of the veterans exemption paperwork, 
the blind paperwork, the um, senior application paperwork. And I just sort of will go through the whole process of, um, you know, how, what the qualifications are for each one. Um, explain. Okay, so it's, more, ex it's more verbal with handouts. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. I will be explaining to them, um, you know, how the process works. So when you get the exemption, where does it get applied? How does it work? Okay. Um, I've been thinking about trying to put together some sort of display. Um, and I actually think that something that I might do is bring with me a calendar, um, a full year calendar that I, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but they have it's like January, February, March, and then below that, April, May, and June, July, August, so on and so forth. And that's really helpful for people to visualize when we're talking about due dates, fiscal years, and um, tax due dates as well. Because when you have that type of a calendar, you can highlight the middle section of that calendar is when your tax bills are due. So it's all, you know, it, it just makes it easier. So I think that might be something that I'm looking to bring. But if you have, if you, if any of you have any suggestions of some other visuals that you think might be helpful, mm -hmm. please let me know because I'd be happy to do that too. Because mm -hmm. talking at people is, is a lot, especially when it's a lot of information. So yeah, I think just a, a good size poster to leave in the senior center would be helpful throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So it keeps it in front of them. And, you know, because a lot of different people go in and out of that. Yeah, yeah. So something that we could put together, maybe just sort of giving, um, you know, some sort of pictures on there. So it's not just words, but giving that option for the senior exemptions. Right. Yeah, um, due, would, due dates are important. Yeah. But I'm not yeah, sure and, you need the due dates there. You just need people aware that, you know, who well, to contact and explore yeah. this more. You, yes, on both sides. I think due okay. dates are important because, well, first of all, you want to let them know that you know, there's a due date to fill out this application. There's a time frame for sure. that. Yeah. But and you also want them to know that the due dates for their final tax bills is when they're going to see this exemption if they're approved for it. No. So I always just throw in the other two as well, just because we're talking about two of the four quarters. We might as well remind them about the others as well. So do you, you have a target date for when uh, tax bills are going to go out this year? I don't yet, um, just because we haven't run a test file yet, and we haven't actually officially gotten our tax rate approved by the state yet, um, which I don't think it'll be a problem to get that done on time. Everything has been submitted to them, so it's just a matter of them getting it back to us. I, I have a vague recollection of getting my tax bill on New Year's Eve last year. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to be mailed by law by December 31st. Okay. Um, by close of the post office. So um, at the very, very latest, that would be the date that they would go out. I think generally um, it sounds as though Amherst <laughs> likes to send them between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, that way it's not, so. I, I used to joke in Greenfield that I'm sending out my Christmas cards because if they ever went early, then they would arrive by <laughs> Christmas. So, um, you know, I, I think it depends. I don't expect them to be going out on December 31st. I do expect them to be going out before that. So I guess an answer to your question would be hopefully the week before, uh, between Christmas and New Year's. Yes, so what's the proposed tax rate? Uh, $20.10 per thousand. It's down a little bit. It is, yes. <coughs> yeah. While we're talking about exemptions, when do you update the dollar amounts? Every fiscal year. So, so, so the oh, state July. sends us something usually sometime at the end of May, beginning of June okay. to be able to update our figures. And then we do that math calculation to do that every year. That updates the income levels and everything? Yes. What about the amount of money we give people? Does that get updated every year? No, that's something I don't know how often that gets updated. Um, I know at one point, well before I started in the assessing world, um, for example, the senior exemption used to be $750, which um, in some communities, that's still the exemption. Um, but th other towns have adopted to give the $1,000 exemption. And then in Amherst, we have also taken the extra adoption to give the your first year, for example, would be the $1,000 and can increase up to $2,000. So we have an, a, another local option that we have adopted here in Amherst um, that other communities have not necessarily done. So our, ex our exemptions are maxed out under state law? Yes. Okay. 
So we can't increase the thousand, even though inflation's gone out of sight. No, no. And, you know, hearing that that happens, if inflation does continue to stay, you know, way high, they the state may come out with something new. But as for now, I think this thousand dollars in government world is a most is a fairly recent update. So I, I can't really imagine that that one would be coming anytime soon. But again, you know, with things the no. way they are, you never know. Let's talk to our local or our state representatives. That's who drive it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, want the same across the state. Then they, they wouldn't want one town having something more than another town, right? Uh, yes and no. Um, because like I said, some towns still some of the smaller towns, um, especially in the hill towns, still have the seven hundred and fifty dollar exemption instead of the thousand. Um and other towns have adopted the $1,000. Um, I think a lot of the larger communities have done the 1,000. And then again, on top of that, Amherst has adopted to be able to extend that 1,000 uh, to up to 2,000 if you are applying year after year and receiving the same exemption. Okay, great, that's helpful. Yeah. So um, so the other thing that I had to mention in the assessor update is just that we're still working on the chapter properties. We had sort of touched on that um, a little bit when we were talking about that one particular lien where uh, the updating of the landlines will be happening into the fiscal year 2024 because I can't touch anything for 23 um, right now. And those applications were uh, being applied for for fiscal year 24. So just a reminder again, um, what I'm what I'm talking about is if someone's doing X amount of acres of Christmas trees, I'm going to go into vision and say, you know, five acres, Christmas trees, four acres, hay, so on and so forth, so that they are taxed appropriately based on what it is that they're actually farming on their land. So are they helpful in giving you feedback on what they're doing? Oh, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. Right. The, without those applications, I have no idea what each farmer is doing on their field. Um, and even with visits on each and every farm, I may still not know because A, I can't tell what something is because some, many crops look the same. Um, but also like a hay field may have just been hayed and the, the, the field has been picked up. Maybe it happens to have a fence around it and I think it's a pasture, but it's really a hay field. So it's, I really need those applications to be filled out in order so, to know accurately what's happening on each parcel. So it's my sense from some private conversations we've had that uh, given your youth and energy, you are tightening up on certain tap, uh, principal assessor uh, procedures and functions. Isn't that true? Um, I, yeah, I would say- Clarifying. Yeah. Clarifying, excuse me, that's clarifying. a good word. Yeah, that's I mean- a I, word. It could be loosening too. <laughs> it could really, be. It, could it really be could be. You get more uh, accurate. It, it, I, nothing wrong with anybody's way of doing it. Um, oftentimes when a new assessor comes into a community, things are just done differently. Um, I can say that it's happening in Greenfield. I actually just listened to the council meeting the other day um, and I can see just a difference in the presentation alone. So it's not that anything is done right or wrong. Um, it's just a different personality, a different set of eyes. And, you know, that may cause for some, tightening up over here, but some loosening up over here, a totally different way to do things over here. So, so yes, I guess that would be the answer. <laughs> I, I might ask you before, Kim, but I, I question if you have a piece of land that's 30 acres with no house or anything, mm -hmm. uh, it's not chapter or anything, it's just, you know, land. Do you still put a one house site on there and value it for a house site? <laughs> If it has the proper frontage. So if, for example, you have. Say I have uh, frontage on a, a road. Yep. So if you have the proper frontage on a road, there would be a building lot size, depending on the neighborhood that you're in okay. um, and the part of town that you're in. Um, 30,000 square feet is often um, used 20,000, uh, not square feet. I'm sorry, 30, 30. I know what I'm trying to say. Value. Assessment. <laughs> no, no. <Value>. I'm <laughs> trying to say frontage feet. So a hundred, a oh. hundred feet frontage, for example, is your your building lot, and it may be that you can have a thirty thousand square foot 
building lot at that hundred uh, at that hundred frontage square foot. Um, so it you know it depends on in Amherst it depends on where you are. There's different requirements per different parts of town. Um, some towns keep it all the same. Okay, um, that one acre is valued for a lot more than the rest of the land around it. And and again, it could be one acre, it could be less. So so commonly I've seen 30,000 square feet, which is just shy of an acre. Okay. Um, but in some communities and some areas of this town, yes, it would be one acre uh, of a building lot. Um, if that piece of property had no frontage, then no, that would just be considered excess land and there would be no building lot assessed there. However, if that lot has like what's called a flag lot, so it looks like a flag pole and then there's the big thick lot at the back, that could be assessed as a potentially buildable lot. So um, it with special permitting, that flag pole, so to speak, could be their driveway and then they could have plenty of space to build their house out, out on the, the actual main part of the land. Um, so in that case, uh, it would depend on if, as a potentially buildable lot, you generally will get that assessment for a building lot. Um, but if you can prove that it's not a buildable lot, then we can change it um, to just excess land. Okay. So, okay. Well, with that being said, I don't have anything else to talk about for the assessor's update. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is just to, to um, pick a meeting date for our next meeting. Well, it sounds yeah. like, um... The second Thursday, you're going to be busy in the morning. That's the 8th. Yes. Um, I have nothing so far scheduled on the 15th. That'll be fine. We want to do that? Okay. Lee? And yeah I, already have a, yeah, I already have a schedule on the 15th. That's fine. Everybody... Oh, 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 you've got it marked in already. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, th I think we had mentioned maybe um, yeah. at one point a bunch of meetings going forward. And we're still okay with the 930 timeframe? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so then our next scheduled meeting will be December 15th at 930 a.m. Um, and you I, have no more, you have no further appearances in front of the council coming up. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. correct. Um, I will also inquire about a possible in-person meeting um, to see more information about that. I know we started to do um, hybrid, uh, but I, I'm at fault for that because I keep forgetting to tell the, the IT department that I need that room and I need help getting that set up. So apologies for that, but I will mention, um, I, I will inquire about what what we should be doing. Um, well, now, that I, now, that I'm, I'm, now that I've had COVID in the last few days, I'm good. <laughs> You're safe for, for 90 days or whatever it is. <laughs> Tim, I'd go with whatever's simpler for you. Okay. Yes, I, mean, I agree. Personally, I don't need a hybrid meeting if it's more work for you. I, I, can I just say either we should all we should meet all in person or all Zoom. I just it seems like the hybrid aspect is extra. <laughs> although I, I suppose if we meet in person, do we have to make ourselves available uh for a for somebody to, to come in on Zoom? Is that? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, God. Let's just stay all Zoom until we decide to all meet in person. Well, it looks like I think Zoom is here to stay, isn't it? Yeah. Probably at some point um, it will be where like most people are in a room and then we have a Zoom recording happening so that those who can't attend have that ability to. Um, and but think I think. That, do you think that's become easy to do or not? Yeah. Very easy, especially with a small committee like ours um, or a board, I should say. Uh, it's very simple. We we meet in the we meet in the downstairs conference room with a with with a with some sort of a, a box. So we would probably meet upstairs in the town room where we had done a couple of times, just because the Zoom is all set up up there and the computer is all ready to go and the camera and everything like that. So um, that's probably where it would be. All right. So other uh, other committees. Have have it previously set up for hybrid, right? Yeah, like yeah. Actually, our finance. town council does that right now. Yeah, right. So yeah, they do. So, okay. So with that being said, um, we we do have a small executive session to talk about excise one excise abatement request and a couple of uh, personal exemptions. Um, and, and strictly for those per for that purpose, right? Yes, and okay, the I intention is to not come back to a public meeting after we discuss those 
two items. Okay, I move to go into executive session for the limited purposes you've just stated. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So I'm going to stop recording again before I do. I just want to mention again, our next scheduled meeting is going to be December 15th at 9.30 a.m. And I'm going to go ahead and stop recording to go into executive session with no intentions of coming back out. Um, and we will discuss one excise abatement request and um, personal exemption requests. Thank so I'm you. going to go ahead and stop recording now. Thank you.